Australia just hit a new record of renewable energy in winter, which is amazing. It happened in winter, not even in summer. So you can imagine the kind of records we're going to see by the end of this year. They'll be crazy. But what is so, so weird about this is that the coldest places in Australia are the ones where renewable energy is king. The ones where solar, for example, and renewables are being used the least, in fact, by far the least, are the hottest locations. What is going on? Why are some states smashing others when the other ones that are getting smashed are basically living in the world's sunniest, most perfect place for solar that you can possibly imagine? Well, I'm not sure what's going on there, but I do know this. Coal and gas reached new record lows. And that, considering it was winter, means the end, well, at least the beginning of the end, for those two types of fuel. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. I love these kinds of numbers. Imagine where we will be by 2030. Now, currently, solar panels this year are down 30% in terms of price versus last year. If you're not seeing that price reflected in the quotes you're getting, look for someone else, seriously. Battery pack prices, exactly the same thing. On the last day of winter, Australia reached a record nearly 38% renewables for the entire year. Not just for a single day, but for the entire year. Australia's main grid set a renewable energy share record of 37.6% for the past 12 months. That is a new benchmark. And it was set on the very last day of winter, the 31st of August. So you can imagine just how incredible these numbers will be. When we look at them, when we look at these again at the end of summer, the figures could be closer to 45% Australia-wide. But if you think about it, those numbers are still a bit disappointing. When you consider that some states in Australia, or some places in Australia, um, are really just smashing fossil fuels. For example, Adelaide is at 70%. That's not on a day. That's their average. That's their rolling average over the past 12 months, 70%. And they're just about to actually turn on one of the biggest wind farms in Australia. Imagine what the numbers will be by the end of this year. We're very close to 90%. I think. Tasmania. What about Tasmania? I mean, Tasmania is the coldest place in Australia. It gets the least amount of sun in Australia, and it's at 94.3% renewables. However, of course, as many of you probably know, most of that is from hydro, but they do have a fair bit of solar as well. Surprisingly, Victoria, which has far less sun on average than New South Wales or Queensland, uh, it actually beat New South Wales and Queensland. Victoria is at 41% now, New South Wales is at 29.6%, and Queensland a very, very disappointing 26.4%. Why is this happening in these areas? Well, first of all, let's look at Western Australia. They have a lot of sun, they're at 34.3%. So anyway, my point remains here. Even if you compare Victoria, which has, like I said, far less sun, trust me, it has far less sun. I've lived there all my life, or most of my life. I'm now living in New South Wales, there is so much sun here. It is so much sunnier on a consistent basis. I think there's only been two days here since I've been here where it hasn't been sunny. Absolutely incredible. Now, why is it that uh, New South Wales is so far behind Victoria? I don't know. It's crazy. It doesn't add up. And why is it that the sunniest place in Australia, Queensland, is at only 26.4%? It's the worst state in the entire country. Staggering, 26.4. Whatever the case may be, my friends, I really think the population of Queensland, they've got to be asking the government, what the hell are you doing? Now, when I say this, the reason I say this, you should be asking your government this because you're paying more for your electricity as a result. Now, maybe you're not going to be paying more now or this year, but I can tell you now that if you look at the forecasting, it's always more expensive if you're dependent on coal. Now, what is the cheapest place to get electricity in Australia? It's Canberra. Canberra has, well, almost 100% renewable energy. That's not simply a coincidence. Queensland's electricity is not cheap. Anyway, 
Either way, the trend here is very positive. What this means is that gas use made up only 5% through winter. Normally gas use in winter is quite high because, well, it's cold, but it wasn't. That's its lowest level on record. Across Australia, coal use fell to 57.4%. That's also its lowest number on record, especially for winter. That will, of course, change. There's huge amounts of solar, wind, and battery storage being deployed all across Australia right now. However, to get to Australia's goal of 82% renewables by 2030, we do have a long way to go. In fact, renewable energy needs to be deployed at a faster rate than what it is now if we're going to achieve that goal. But the way to put this in perspective, the media doesn't like to do perspective. It's not a, not a very nice thing for them because then it makes you feel like the world isn't coming to an end. And how would, the, how would the world be if it wasn't coming to an end and there wasn't drama to entertain you? The way that we can see that this will in fact happen is that today, renewable energy, sun in particular, Solar, of course, I'm referring to, is at its cheapest price in history. Now, those cost declines we've seen for solar over the past 10 years, which have been absolutely staggering, are not going to stop this year. Solar will be significantly cheaper by 2030 than what it is today. So this just means that the cheaper a technology gets, we see the S-curve adoption accelerate. It's like when a smartphone becomes much cheaper than a, uh, an equivalent or it becomes at least on par with, say, an old Nokia 3310. People say, well, why am I buying this old junk? I'll get the new version. That's what happens with all kinds of technologies. And that's what's happening with solar and, of course, with battery technology. And we need batteries for solar because we need to store that energy at night time. Now, so, of course, Australia is one of the sunniest places on Earth. So we are in the perfect position to take advantage of this situation. The thing to keep in mind is Australia imports energy. We import oil. We import a huge, we're a net importer of energy. We don't have to be. If we create our own, that changes very quickly. Now let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.